here's something that's very important. So when we talk about rods, we usually talk about things as they move through the rod. So bear with me here, I'm gonna try to draw a rod. So there's my rod. Oh, that's not bad. And I'm gonna take a section of this rod. And I'm gonna say this part is X and this part is X plus DX, a small change. So there are two types of waves that can pass through these, longitudinal and transverse. So we have to calculate the speed of them as they go through. Suppose I want to calculate the velocity of a longitudinal wave. as the waves pass through these. So suppose my cross section is A, my density of the rod is rho. Can I also call density as mass over volume? May I also write mass as rho A delta X? May I also replace this X with dx, small change, so far so good. Now I'm gonna tell you something really funny. So guys, can, can I have your attention real quick? So I'm gonna zoom into this section. So if I zoom into this section and I say this is x, and this is x plus dx, do you remember when we do springs, we say F equals minus KX where X is the small, everybody remember Hooke's law, right? For a spring where X is the small distance that that Hooke's law moves. So if you have a solid, it's basically a bunch of molecules that are joined together. As the wave passes by, the molecules move back and forth in their positions. I am going to redefine that X by this funny looking symbol. Oh, people are gonna yell at me. Why am I using the symbol? It's because most textbooks use the symbol. So if you see it next time, you should recognize it as a small change in the area as the wave passes by. And how do we write this? We write it as an E and then we put a tail on it. So it's not complicated. I just want you to be aware. So when you see it in a textbook, somewhere down the line, you're in graduate school, you'll know what it is. So it's the equivalent of your X for a spring. So when you're talking about Hooke's law, do you put it as F equals minus K delta X? because you understand that that's the small x that we're talking about, right? We don't have to put the delta there. It's the same thing. That's my epsilon. It's my small change, but the small change in the area of it, right? As it moves through, yes. So that's delta A. Yes, it's the delta A. Think of, yes, that's a good way to think about it. It's the, yes, it's the delta A. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this. So how do I write it? This is the epsilon, but what will it be here? This will be epsilon. Okay, so we'll have another one here, right? Agree? Yeah. And that will be defined as epsilon plus the change of x dx as the wave passes by. Why am I not just calling it epsilon and be done with it? Because it's not epsilon. It's epsilon plus small change. And why is it partials? Instead of full derivative, because it could also have y and z. I don't know, right? That's why I'm using those partials. 
So far, so good? Okay, so that means at my position, so I'm going to define uh, some assumptions. Assume, number one, the displacements are small, which means they are within the elastic limit. And number two, no damping. That means nothing is being damped as we move through. So I can start here. You put star in a stop sign. Yes, I put a start in a stop sign. That's illegal. It is well, start that it's not a hexagonal, it's a long <laughs> hexagonal. So I think I'm good. Okay, so let's talk about position X. Here, that's the position X I'm talking about. So I am standing here. My person is standing here at position X. So at position X, may I call the force Per unit area transmitted by the material as F. So think of this as F uh, being defined as F per unit area. So this is my F going that way. So then my total F from the left side, may I write that as A times the little f, right? So if I go back here, this is my a, F, the force from the left. What will be the force from the right? Well, my force from the right at position X plus delta X. So now I'm at this position right here. May I write following the same logic AF plus A partial F over partial X DX. But I'm going to add a minus sign here. Why am I adding a minus sign? Because I chose my coordinates positive that way. Right? It's the force that's being applied the other way. So may I write the total force now? as AF minus AF minus A partial F over partial X DX. Well, these two go away. So does that mean I can write Newton's laws? Yay, Newton. Sigma F equals F applied. 